Hey kids, do you like drawing circles inside of squares? Correct! That's right, today we're talking about particle diagrams. Hit the theme! Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu Kemen At Ya. I'm your host Shu, and with me as always is Fu. What up, nerds? So in our last video, we talked about classifying the different types of matter. So in this one, we're gonna talk about how to represent that matter visually. Let's get started. Particle diagrams and the separation of mixtures. A lesson from the matter and energy unit. What is a particle diagram? A particle diagram is a visual representation of matter. Matter is usually represented as circles. Separate circles represent atoms. Connected circles represent molecules. Elements, compounds, and mixtures can be shown with particle diagrams, along with different phases of matter. Let's take a look at the different phases of matter as represented in particle diagrams. In our first drawing, we have a solid represented. Notice how the particles are organized and tightly packed together. They're also not filling the bottom of the container. In our second drawing, we have a liquid, and the liquid has particles a little bit more spread out, a little bit more jumbled and disorganized. These are filling the bottom of the container. In our third drawing, we have a gas. These particles are very spread out, and they fill the entire container. All right, so now we're going to look at different types of matter, the first of which is an element. And we have here a diatomic element, represented by two identical purple circles. Remember, diatomic elements, it's still a molecule because it's two atoms connected together, but we have an element because it's two identical atoms connected together. The second one here is a compound. Now in this case, we know it's a compound because it has two different types of circles, being red and green. The last one, we have a mixture. Now this is a mixture of diatomic elements. We have some that are represented by two larger purple circles, and we have some that are represented by smaller red circles. And because they're all separate, this is considered a mixture. Next, we're gonna look at the two different types of mixtures. In a homogeneous mixture, we should see that the particles are evenly distributed. Now, if you look at the drawing here, it's not a perfect pattern, but you can see they're somewhat spread out. In the heterogeneous mixture, however, we see two distinct layers in our drawing. You try. For each of the following state solid, liquid, or gas, element, compound, or mixture, and state whether it's homogeneous or heterogeneous. Now mixtures can be either homogeneous or heterogeneous. It's a good tip here to remember that even though substances are not mixtures, they're considered homogeneous. How do you separate mixtures? Mixtures are physical combinations of substances, as a reminder. The parts of a mixture retain their original properties, and this is the key here. Mixtures can be separated physically by taking advantage of these different properties. So if you look at this image to my left here, we have a mixture of sulfur, that yellow powdery substance, and iron, that black filings there. The magnet is used to separate out the iron from the sulfur. And this is because iron, even when mixed with the sulfur, still retains its physical property of being magnetic. Sulfur is not magnetic and still stays that way in the mixture. Separating mixtures based on different densities. So floating and sinking solids. Add water, skim or use forceps to remove the floaters, drain water and dry the sinkers. So if you take a look at our image here, we have salt and we have floating beads. So when we add the water, the salt will go to the bottom and the beads will float to the top. Liquids with different densities. Add mixture to a separatory funnel. Drain liquid with the higher density at the bottom. Now it's important that these are two liquids that do not mix. Let's say we have a mixture of oil and water. We've already put it in our separatory funnel. Notice that the oil is less dense than the water. 
All we have to do now is drain it. We open it up and we let the denser water drain from the bottom into our beaker. Got to do this carefully and make sure when it gets to the very end that you close things up and now we have our oil separated from our water. Separating mixtures based on different particle sizes or solubilities. Straining. Use screens of various mesh sizes. Smaller particles pass through while the larger particles remain on the screen. Straining separates mixtures based on particle size. So as you can see, we have a mixture of marble chips and sand grains. So we're gonna pour it through this sifter here, and you'll notice that the small grains of sand will go through the sifting medium, and the large marble chips get caught up. Now a little bit of shaking to get those sand grains out, and we now have separated our mixture. Filtration. Pour mixture through a funnel with filter paper. Soluble substances and water go through. This is called the filtrate. Soluble substances are the substances that dissolve in water. So some students think that just the water will go through the filter paper, but anything dissolved, these soluble substances, will also go through the filter. Insoluble substances stay on the filter paper. This is called the residue. Insoluble substances are the substances that don't dissolve in water. These particles are too large to pass through the filter. In filtration, we need to use a piece of filter paper. Notice that it's flat, but our funnel is conical. What we need to do is follow a set procedure for folding this filter paper. First, we want to fold it in half, like a taco. Fold it in half again. Ooh, look, it's a little fan. Now if you look, we've got one, two, three, four curves in there. We want to pull three of them to one side with one left behind. And that's how we get our little cone. If you want to fold it one more time this way to make a pyramid, that also helps it take shape better to fit inside of our funnel. We're going to be separating a mixture of sand, salt, and water. Our first step is to wet the filter paper, and we do this to help keep the filter paper in place. Our next step is to pour off the top level of liquid. Because salt is soluble in water, it is a part of this layer. We do this to help prevent the sand from clogging up the filter too early in the process. We call this decanting. Next, we turn our beaker towards our funnel and filter paper. We then bring our water bottle and point it with the water flowing a little bit above the wet sand, which helps it flow directly into our filter paper. Our insoluble substance, the sand, is our residue. It's what's left over on the filter paper. The soluble substance, the salt, is still dissolved in the water. Both the water and the salt go through the filter paper. This is called our filtrate. Separating mixtures based on different boiling points. Distillation. If given two liquids, adjust the temperature to the lower boiling point so that only one liquid boils off. You're going to cool this vapor in the condenser and collect it as a liquid in the receiving flask. We call this the distillate. Not 100% pure since some of the other liquid evaporates, so you can't just get all of one liquid without some contamination from the other. We can repeat this process over and over. Over and 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 over again for increased purity. Now, if we have a solid and a liquid in our mixture, we can completely boil off the liquid and leave the solid behind. So here we have an animation of a distillation setup because we were way too lazy to set this up. Number one in the diagram would be our heating element. Typically, this is a hot plate or a Bunsen burner. Number two is pointing to the mixture. 
Number three is pointing to the vapors that are coming off of the mixture. Now the vapors are comprised of the substance that has the lower boiling point. That will be the one that boils off first. Now those vapors go up into what's called a condensing tube. So number four is pointing at the condensing tube. Now number five and number six are where the water, the cold water goes into number five and comes out of number six. Now it's this cold water that's cooling the vapors down and condensing them. Now those vapors are turning into liquid halfway through that condenser and they're coming out in the end to our flask, number seven. Number eight is our distillate. Separating mixtures based on different attractions. Chromatography. As a solvent, like water, travels up a strip of paper, a mixture, like ink, can be separated into its component parts, like the dyes. The dye most attracted to the solvent rises to the top. The dye least attracted to the solvent remains near the bottom. You know, chromatography may seem like a very simple separation technique, where we just separate a mixture into different colors, but really, it doesn't have to be paper chromatography and it doesn't have to involve ink and dyes. No, and in fact, chromatography beyond high school chemistry is the most important way of separating mixtures based on their attractions. For instance, you can't walk into any lab anywhere and not see a high performance liquid chromatography machine. Now this machine, though it's very expensive and not like paper that you're separating dyes from, it still uses the same principles of separating based on different attractions. That's it for today's episode on particle diagrams and separating mixtures. Later, nerds. Today's episode is brought to you by Orange Haterade, testosterone supporting matrix, freakish vascularity, and some pretty neat pumps. Hate everyone at the gym with the power of citrus. But we never off, always on to the break of dawn. S C I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh, it's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh, it's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in, chill to the next episode.